A typical Pixar movie is filled with all kinds of theories, Easter eggs, and connections. When you toss in the land of the dead, some Mexican traditions, and hidden moments, the theories only multiply. See how Pixar's Coco is connected to other Pixar films, real-life celebrities, and the strong similarities to The Little Mermaid. Before you watch, click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new Screen Rant content. Your photos of your dentist, Brenda. Enjoy your visit. Gracias. The infamous live forever. In Coco, the land of the dead acts as a party-filled extravaganza until characters reach their final death and are forgotten about forever. The only way to live on in the land of the dead? Ensure you are remembered. For small families, the concept may be hard as multiple generations grow. For the infamous, this concept can help them live forever. Through pages of history books and stories passed down through generations, theoretically, people like Charles Manson and Hitler could live on in the land of the dead forever if they were from Mexican descent. It's a scary very thought to think an evil dictator could have a grand life in the land of the dead longer than your great great grandfather. Showtime. Mr. Incredible and Hector. One is a hero with super strength. The other is a former singer all full of skin and bones. Yet Hector and Mr. Incredible have a lot in common. Both want to be remembered, not just by their families, but by the world for their contributions to society. In The Incredibles, it's not just enough for Mr. Incredible to do his acts of heroism. He wants the world to remember them, and he also wants to continue to provide the service to the world. In Coco, Hector not only wants to be remembered by his daughter and family, but he wants the credit and fame for writing all the songs that were stolen from him. They represent a widespread feeling of being known and having an impact on the world in a positive way. The Lost Musical Coco may have great music, a few song numbers, and focus on the long history of Mexican musical traditions, but the Pixar film is not a musical, even though it was originally conceived as one. Through multiple interviews and revelations, there are more songs, moments, and whole scenes left on the cutting room floor. While fans clamor for a Zack Snyder cut of the Justice League, we should really be asking for the musical cut of Coco. It would be interesting to see how Pixar planned on producing their first musical ever. Oh, he's very handsome, isn't he? I don't know, he looks kind of hairy and slobbery to me. Coco and the Little Mermaid while fans love to connect Pixar movies with each other, Coco's biggest connection may come with the Disney classic The Little Mermaid. The similarities between the film are uncanny. Both main characters go against family traditions and seek out their own passions. Ariel has her secret grotto, while Miguel has his hidden fort. Once we get used to the areas, destruction occurs in the form of Ariel's statue and Miguel's guitar. Take a look at the little scene, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's beginning, for even more connections. Just like Miguel, music is banned from the family, but the drive and natural love of music draws them and everyone together in the end. He lived the kind of life you dream about. Me. Until 1942. Obsessed with fame. Coco is filled with a lot of important messages about family, but the movie also focuses heavily on fame, and a theory points out the cultural obsession with being famous. This obsession extends beyond Mexican culture, and the film only seems to illustrate how fame can even help you in the afterlife. Famed Mexicans like Frida, El Santo, and Pedro Infante all make appearances and are living the high life in the land of the dead. Children may get the wrong message about reaching for fame and going viral rather than seeing the true message of celebrating family. I was looking for, um, diversion! What? <laughs> so long, sucker! <laughs> A connection to Bing Bong. Coco really stands out on its own as an original film in the Pixar family, but the introduction of the Pixar theory a few years ago has made people analyze the plot, characters, and themes. One way Coco connects to the Pixar theory is through the inside-out character Bing Bong. Bing Bong dies in Riley's brain when she forgets about him. The brain and memory orbs are essentially an internal version of the land of the dead. Once the memory orb or being, like Bing Bong, is forgotten in the brain, the spirit found in the land of the dead goes to the final death. She's forgetting me. Who? My daughter. Young Deaths 
At the end of Coco, we see Coco pass away and join her family in the land of the dead. Once there, her body is in the same state it was when she passed away. We can only assume that all the bodies are like this in the land of the dead, and the thought of that is kind of disturbing when you analyze the characters. There are dozens upon dozens of characters who are all middle-aged or younger. A massive amount of people clearly died before the age of 50. We want to know how, why, and what's causing so many young deaths. Anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. Pure poetry. Inspiration from the TV. No matter if you're a rat, a robot, or a young boy, following your dreams often starts with inspiration from the television. In Coco, Wally, and Ratatouille, all three main characters get their separate forms of inspiration from watching the TV. Shots in each animation showcases the reflection of the television off the character's eyes. Not only are these shots relatable to children, but a theory states that they reflect the childhood of the film's writers and producers. Inspiration from some type of television show helps to lead them down the path to a career at Pixar. Here's Johnny! <laughs> the Shining Theory We've all heard of the Pixar theory, but Coco also extends the Shining theory, where a majority of Pixar films, especially ones connected to Lee Unkrich, contain Easter eggs about the classic horror film. In Coco, Unkrich has said there are multiple references to The Shining, but one of the more obvious ones is the painting of the iconic twin girls. The scene can be seen in the background of Frida's art studio and only intertwines The Shining even further with other Pixar movies like Toy Story and Final Finding Nemo. Wow, there you have it. What theory do you believe the most? What is your favorite part of Coco? Are there any theories we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos.